Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries and let's build a bed. Let's make that a bed with storage. So before we dive into the build, let's take just a minute to discuss the basic anatomy of a bed. Now I know that not all beds are built the same, but the four typical parts of a bed are the headboard, footboard, side rails, and slats. In this case, my side rails contain a drawer on each side. And just in case you're wondering why there aren't two drawers on each side, it's because if I added drawers at the front, I wouldn't be able to open them if I put nightstands here. I built each part of this bed separately first before putting them all together. So let's start with part one, the side rails. I built this bed using red oak. Now I don't really love red oak, so I don't use it very often, but originally I had planned to stain this bed black and I thought the oak green would look best for that. Obviously I changed my mind and didn't stain it black, but I had already bought the wood, so I just used it anyway. This bed would have been totally fine and quite a bit cheaper, built from my usual pine spruce and birch plywood. So feel free to use whatever wood type that you'd like. To get started, I ripped two 13 inch wide strips of plywood from my sheet to use for the side rails. I trimmed these to length, then I traced out where my drawers will go. I'm going to be adding a 1x3 along the top, bottom, sides, and middle. So for the drawer, I cut out this section between the trim on the side rails. So as not to waste any material, I reused the section that I cut out as the drawer fronts later. So I drilled two holes just barely outside of my marks to start cutting from. That way, I didn't have to cut into this piece, I could cut around it. I tried to cut as straight as I could, but let's be honest, it's a jigsaw, so it's going to be a little jiggy. Is that the right word? <laughs> the trim will cover any jagged edges, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I repeated this for both side rails. I've detailed the measurements for this and every other part of the build in the plans, and you can find the printable plans for a twin, full, queen, or king size available in my shop, powered by Shopify. If you aren't familiar with Shopify, it's a leading global all-in-one commerce platform that powers millions of businesses in over 175 countries, including my own. I've been using Shopify for almost four years now as part of my small business. When people who were following me started requesting printable plans and branded merch, I had no idea how to provide that. Thankfully, Shopify did, and they made it so easy for me to get started from setting up my shop's website to creating product pages to fulfilling my digital orders. Shopify has enabled me to provide customers with the products that they've requested while simultaneously allowing me the opportunity to grow my business. That's a win-win for everyone. If you or someone you know is looking to start or grow their own business, start your free trial with Shopify today at shopify.com slash woodshopdiaries or scan the QR code. Now, just a couple of notes about this. I mentioned that I'm using red oak for this build. Solid red oak lumber, like 1x3s, are pretty expensive, so I ripped my own 1x3s from my plywood sheet and edge banded them to look like solid boards. This saved a significant amount of money and material because red oak plywood is way cheaper than red oak lumber, at least where I live. However, in the plans, I recommend using solid 1x3s if you're going with less expensive lumber, like pine. Either option, solid 1x3s or plywood strips, will work fine, but edge banding the plywood strips is pretty time consuming, so unless it's saving a significant amount of money, it's really not worth the hassle. I trimmed these plywood strips to fit, then glued and clamped them onto the side rails. Then I glued another 1x3 along the top edge.
Once the glue dried on these pieces, I started building the framing for the drawer boxes. Using 2x4s for this structurally is probably overkill, but 2x4s are pretty cheap now, so that's what I'm using. I cut three pieces of 2x4, two for the side and one for the back, and I assembled these into a U shape using pocket holes and screws. I attached these on each side of the drawer opening on the inside of the rails using pocket holes and screws about one and a half inches up from the bottom edge. I trimmed another strip of plywood to one and a half inches wide to glue and screw along the inside of each side rail. This will be where I rest the bed slats on later. Instead of plywood, you could also just use a 1x2 or a 2x2 if you wanted it a little beefier. Then I attached 22 inch drawer slides onto the sides. I used a scrap block to position these slides about one and a quarter inches up from the bottom of the two x four. That way they would be fully in the opening so they could easily slide open and closed. Then it was time to build the drawers. I have a complete guide on how I build my drawer boxes in a video that I will link below, but in a summed up version, I cut three quarter inch plywood down for the drawer box sides, then cut quarter inch dados in them to install a plywood bottom panel. I have a dado blade, but usually unless I'm cutting like a whole bunch of pieces, I find it easier to just cut a few passes with a regular blade until the cut is about a quarter inch wide. Then I assembled the boxes using pocket holes and screws, installing a quarter inch plywood bottom into the dados. Once my two boxes were together, I removed the part of the drawer slide that mounts to the box and installed this on each side. Then I slid the drawer boxes into the side rails. All right, well, classic example of I forgot to turn on the camera when I did stuff. So here are my drawer fronts. These are the pieces that I cut out of the side panels of the bed, like at the very beginning of the video. So these were pretty rough. I cut them out with a jigsaw, so obviously the edges weren't super smooth. So what I did was I just ran them through the table saw and I cut like about a blade width off of one side. Then I flipped it over and um, moved the rip fence over just about another blade width and cut the other side. And I just trimmed off enough so that the drawer front here is seven and three quarter. The opening is eight inches. So that gives me an eighth of an inch on the top and the bottom for clearance. Basically, I just sliced a little off until both sides were straight. Now I'm gonna trim these edges on the miter saw. After I had straightened my edges and trimmed them to size, I applied iron-on edge banding to my two drawer fronts. Then I installed them using screws from the inside of each box. Now, there's one more piece that I'll have to add to the side rails, but I will discuss that a little bit later. For now, let's move on to building the head and the footboard. 
These are both much simpler to build than the side rails and they're both basically the exact same thing, just with different dimensions. I trimmed down two pieces of red oak 2x4 for the sides and one piece for the top to make the headboard frame. I laid these out on the workbench and marked the joints to drill dowel holes. I used a simple little dowel jig to drill holes at these marks. If you're interested, I will link a detailed guide for how to use a dowel jig in the video description. Once the holes were drilled on each piece, I assembled the frame using dowel pins and glue. It was a bit of a ride on the struggle bus here because this was pretty large and I had to clamp my clamps together to be able to get this tight. But I did finally get it and I set it aside to dry. I repeated this entire process for the footboard, which is literally the exact same thing, just with shorter legs. While these were drying, I trimmed down some 3 quarter inch plywood panels to fit into both of these frames. Now, there are a million ways to attach these panels into the frames, and I did actually consider routing a rabbit on the back side to install them, but I kind of hate the router. <laughs> So I ultimately just decided to drill pocket holes around the edges and install with pocket hole screws. That said, these panels need to be cut pretty precisely to fit into the frames this way. And we'll talk more about that in just a little bit. Once they were screwed in, I added some detail with trim. For the head and footboards, I cut my own 1x4 again from plywood to trim along the bottom, but then I used 1x3s vertically to add some more detail. I simply glued these pieces onto the front of the panels. You could also nail if you wanted to, but I didn't want to deal with filling any nail holes, so I just clamped and let it dry. So full transparency, just to be completely honest with you, um, when I cut these panels for the head and the footboard, they ended up being just a tad short on the sides. So there are very tiny gaps on each edge. And to be honest, unless you were looking really close, you wouldn't really notice them, but I noticed them because I'm looking really close. So I'm working with oak and I don't have a whole lot of oak in my shop right now and I don't want to have to go buy anything because this was already very expensive. So I cut these pieces off of a one by. So they're three quarter inches like wide and then I cut them about maybe three eighths inches um, like thick. So I'm going to just glue these in here and that will hide like the little gaps on each end. Actually, I might glue them in that way. It adds a little dimension. You know what? I kind of like that. I almost kind of like that. I like the pieces. Oh, that might be really cool. I like that. All right, we're doing it. I ripped some three quarter inch wide by about three eighths inch thick strips of red oak to glue on as trim. Now I had not originally planned to add these pieces, but sometimes things just work out in the process of building. I really love the subtle extra dimension and detail that these pieces added, plus they hid some of those slight imperfections on the edges.
So with the sides, the headboard, and the footboard all together, it was time to start assembling the bed. When I build beds, I usually like to use these basic bed brackets. One piece mounts to the side rail and the other mounts to the leg on the head or the footboard. So I propped the side rails up on blocks, clamped the pieces together so they stayed put, then attached these brackets at each corner. The part with the slots goes onto the leg and the part with the, uh, what I'm gonna call teeth, <laughs> goes onto the side rails. This was super easy to do on the headboard end, but the footboard end was a little more cramped. I made it work, but it's a tight fit. I had to remove the drawers to give me a little more room to work with. All right, so I've got the brackets installed on every corner. So for right now, I just have these blocks here in the back supporting the drawer frame. I'm gonna add a removable support that will keep it supported once the bed is like put together in its final place, whatever. I don't want the support block back here to be permanent. I've had a storage bed very similar to this in the past and the pieces here were permanent. And so every time we took the bed apart, it would like the whole side rail would tilt that way and the drawers would like come out and you couldn't keep them closed. And it was always a pain in the butt whenever we had to disassemble and reassemble the bed. So I'm gonna make the support in the back here removable so you just install it when you put the bed together and then you can take it off if you need to take the bed apart and transport it. To support the drawer box frame, I simply cut a piece of two by four to screw into the back in the middle. You could add two of these, one at each corner, but really you just need to keep the back side of this frame level with the front. And unless you're storing bricks in here, a single block in the middle is more than enough to support it. Finally, the last part of the build was the bed slats. I had these pre-primed 1x4s left over from a previous build, so I just trimmed them down to use as slats. But regular 1x4s or even plywood strips would work just as well. These will rest on the strips I installed on the side rails at the beginning. I cut and screwed two by twos in the center of each slat to support them from sagging in the middle. Now, often people ask why I don't just run a two by four across the middle instead. That would certainly work too, but in order to do that, I would need to run another two by four across the headboard, add thicker material somehow to the footboard, then run the two by four between them and add a center support. Using two by twos here is just a lot less lumber and personally it feels like a lot less work. So this is just what I usually do. Once all the pieces were built and fit together, the last step was finish. I'm gonna be honest, I fretted for days over how to finish this project. I tested several stain and finish options, but ultimately I settled on Minwax weathered oak stain. I stained all four parts of the bed, allowed it to dry, then sealed it with a clear coat and added some knobs to the drawers. And at that point, it was finally ready to bring inside. I assembled the four sides, then placed the slats back in, this time securing them on each side with screws. Then I slid the mattress back on and gave it a test jump. <laughs> Seems good to go. This bed design may actually be my favorite one to date. I just really love these trim details and the storage on the sides. I cannot wait to design and build the matching nightstands and the dresser now that I see how the bed turned out, so be sure to stay tuned for those. I really hope you enjoyed seeing this build come together, and if you'd like the plans to build your own, grab them in the video description. Thanks so much for watching, friends, and until next time, happy building!